Okay, welcome back to class, uh, everyone. I know this is your last hour and uh, might find it a little difficult to concentrate, but uh, just like your attention and uh, I'll just project the slides uh, on the screen so you all can, uh, you know, keep uh, track about what I'm saying. Uh, before we begin, can I ask uh, Thomas to lead us in prayer, please? Thomas? Sure, ma'am. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We praise you, Father. We bless your holy name. Thank you for this wonderful day, O oh Lord, as we sit and listen from your word to learn and equip ourselves in your kingdom to do the ministry among the children. Father, help us to learn. Let your divinity rest upon us. Help us to understand each and every word. Father, we thank you. Praise you. We love you, Father. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Thomas. Okay, so we, uh, yesterday, we were looking at, uh, uh, you know, the developmental needs of children uh, in ages three to four. And uh, we also saw the, uh, you know, they, we saw their, uh, the intellectual, uh, uh, physical, social, spiritual uh, uh, needs. And we also saw, you know, the areas that, um, uh, uh, you know, we can really help them spiritually. Uh, and what are their uh, requirements in this, in that age group. We also looked at, uh, uh, the developmental needs of children between four to seven years. Uh, we saw, um, you know, their growth rates. We saw that what they like to do, what activities we can bring in. Uh, we also saw their, uh, you know, what is, uh, how they relate to others, relate to God. And um, we, we uh, learned the spiritual needs uh, which they need to hear, the spiritual messages that they need to hear, what is the spiritual needs, and uh, what is the spiritual message they need to hear, okay? Uh, so today we look at um, uh, the developmental needs of children in uh, uh, 8 to 10 years old, ages 8 to 10, okay? So we'll just look at that. What is the goals for this age? Uh, they're basically trying to accept uh, themselves. They're learning about their strengths, uh, their gifts, their talents. Uh, they love to make friends. So they're learning to make friends. They're learning to also uh, get along with each other. And uh, because, you know, they're looking at each one of them uh, as different. Um, and, uh, you know, the understanding that all of uh, us are different, they are learning to accept the differences in others and, uh, you know, uh, uh, trying to get along with the others who they are making friends with, okay? They're also beginning to learn uh, about their role in society, uh, their responsibilities in the family and among friends, what they should do, what they shouldn't uh, uh, be doing, okay? Uh, they are early readers, they are able to read easily, so it's good at this time to uh, give them some verses from the Bible uh, which they can read. And this will also help them to get familiar with the books of the Bible. Uh, it will also help them to read the Bible because mostly children in this age, they don't read the Bible by themselves. Uh, you know, either their parents are reading to them or, uh, you know, they are just attending uh, if they have, um, uh, you know, family prayer time. Uh, so we can encourage them by getting them to uh, read the Bible. Of course, they will find it difficult to open to where, you know, to find where Galatians is or Psalms is uh, or where Genesis is. Uh, you know, so you can just uh, help them, tell them Genesis is the first book of the Bible, show them where Psalms is. Maybe you'll have to... Uh, get to each one and open the Bible. Some of them, some children are very smart. They go to the index page or the content page and they see the page number and they uh, turn quickly. But it's good to, it, though it will take time for them to open their Bibles and read, but it's good because they get familiar with the Bible, the books of the Bible. 
and also because they're uh, uh, you know developing to read it's good to get them to read so they will also know that they can go back home and read their bible which is very very important uh, you know for us to teach at from a very early uh, age okay um, they're also learning to look up things in the bible uh, for example you know they're um, uh, you know that god is loving god is caring he forgives uh, uh, people he's compassionate uh, you know uh, what sin does in our lives uh, what is the punishment for sin and salvation so uh, so all of these uh, topics you know uh, that you can as you are teaching them you know, lead them to look at it in the uh, bible so that they know where to find uh, they get familiar with where to find these specific topics uh, in the bible now when we say that uh, you know these are the characteristics of the goals of for uh, the ages 8 to 10 uh, age 8 is basically third standard uh, and uh, four years old they are in ninth and uh, when they're in uh, tens, uh, when they are in the fifth grade they are 10 years old okay so we're basically talking about children who are uh, from third to fifth grade okay uh, so they're learning to uh, look up things in the bible uh, they're also able to copy uh, bible verses so if there's anything that is very important uh, either they can write it down in their student workbooks if you have or if you have a notebook which they bring uh, to uh, children's church or sunday school uh, you can get them to write those bible passages or even write down their uh, memory verses because they're able to uh, write okay uh, they're able to answer uh, written questions uh, with short answers or uh, sentences so you can ask them uh, you know questions uh, uh, and uh, you know maybe even get them to write down what they think uh, basically uh, when you're asking questions it's good to ask them not just uh, details of the narrative that you've told them for example what did uh, you know um, uh, the blind man Bartimaeus do when uh, you know um, uh, you know, nobody was taking him to Jesus and he was losing his opportunity. Now, um, don't ask them very uh, simple questions like that, but ask them questions that will help you understand whether they have got the truth of what you are really telling them, uh, you know, uh, the, the, nar the truths of the narrative that you're trying to bring out or the theological truths that you are trying to tell them about or about the truths about God that you have, uh, you know, communicated to them. Uh, so it's very important that you ask those kind of questions which will gauge uh, for yourself that they have really understood what you're trying to uh, communicate. Now, uh, the thing is, most of our children in who attend Sunday school or children's church regularly, they uh, know all of, um, you know, the Bible stories. But what they really, you know, uh, miss out is the 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 truths, the revelational truths, or the uh, the theological truths, they miss out on the learning and how to apply what they have learned. So that is what we need to focus more on. Of course, any point of time, they will get the details about the story because they'll keep reading, they'll be listening to it. Um, uh, so that is not the you know main focus. Our main focus is you know if you're telling them a uh, blind man Bartimaeus story uh, or narrative then the, the important thing there is you know that Jesus hears us even though we are thousands or millions of people on this face of the earth he knows what we're going to he listens to us he hears our prayer he answers us the other thing is about faith that you know um, uh, blind man Bartimaeus he could not see Jesus through his physical eyes he just heard from a few people you know uh, uh, who Jesus was what he's done and he knew this was the only opportunity and he did not want to miss out on the opportunity and so he did everything and so it this was his faith that got him to uh, receive his sight uh, back what if he said okay i really don't think you know jesus can help me because uh, i've been blind from you know uh, 
you know, from a young age, early age, and uh, it's I'm too old. Nobody can help me now. Nobody is willing to help me. Nobody is willing to take me to Jesus. So I really don't have the opportunity. I have to live the rest of my life like this. But you see that you know it was his faith that did not uh, give up. So you need to ask questions uh, uh, based on. Uh, you know things that they are learn that you're trying to bring out the truths, and if they've understood very very um, clearly, and even if you are getting them to write, uh, you know um, uh, answers, uh, which we usually don't do, but you know in in APC Children's Church we have um, a student workbook. I'll just show it to you, uh, maybe next class. A student workbook where we have uh, a few discussion questions and they are not just based on uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, the answers to the story the narrative that we're saying but it's more about uh, ap application kind of questions uh, kind of um, questions that will help us gauge whether they have really understood or to take the lesson much more into a deeper uh, depth by getting them to think and analyze and write down their uh, thoughts okay but at this age you know um, uh, fifth standard fourth standard is fine third standard uh, uh, third graders find it a little difficult uh, to write so uh, you can basically get them to write uh, you know what they have learned from the story okay uh, because different children will uh, learn different things uh, based on uh, what they are going through based on their own personal uh, needs. Now, for one child, what they would have learned from blind man Bartimaeus' story is that Jesus loves us. So maybe the child is feeling that nobody loves them or uh, Jesus cares for uh, me. So the child is basically feeling that, you know, I don't feel loved and cared. So I know that Jesus loves and cares for me. Another child might, you know, write in their learning experience, what I learned is, I learned that, you know, when I pray that Jesus hears and answers my a prayer. So we know that this child is praying and we know this child is uh, eager to know that Jesus is hearing their prayer and he's answering. Maybe the child is praying for different needs. Uh, maybe another child who is uh, quite mature in their spiritual understanding may say that, you know, um, uh, I learned to uh, not give up uh, you know, in my in my uh, when I ask Jesus to believe and trust that he's going to uh, give me. So uh, different children based on their needs will, uh, you know, apply the lesson personally to themselves uh, and they would have learned different things as you are um, narrating. Okay, so we need to get them to uh, 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 write down what they personally learned. And it's good for us to say, okay, we learned this, this, this from this uh, narrative, but I want you to write down what. It, how it personally uh, uh, ministered to you or what you personally learned. And so we see that different children uh, learn, um, you know, based on their different needs. And so don't give them, okay, this is what we learned. So you need to practice this. They might not go back home and practice it uh, because it's not going to apply to them. So what you need to do is, you know, get them to write down what they learned personally and then write down how they are going to apply it okay now basically you know uh, if um, a child writes that uh, you know a blind man Bartimaeus uh, uh, you know um, uh, cried out to Jesus and Jesus heard so you know I need to even pray every day and I can pray for different people uh, and I know Jesus will hear and answer my prayer so you get them to write uh, don't get them to write something that they are not able to apply very vague. Like for example, uh, one child could have written, you know, um, uh, I, Jesus uh, loves us. Okay, so how are they going to apply it? That the child will write, you know, Jesus loves everyone. Now that is a very general kind of application. It's not very specific, but get them to write specifically. Okay, how do you think that uh, you're going to apply this thought that or what you learned that Jesus loves everyone? Um, so personally for you. So maybe, you know, the child can say, when I feel right there, when I feel that nobody loves and cares me, cares for me, I can, tr I trust that Jesus will, uh, I trust that Jesus loves and cares for me. He's there for me. Uh, so this week I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, not have this doubt in my mind that there's nobody who loves and cares for me. So, uh, you know, practical ways of how they're going to 
um, apply it okay and you can get them to write down because they're able to uh, write easily and also they're able to uh, you know um, understand what you're trying to uh, tell them okay uh, they're able to um, answer written questions is uh, questions with short answers uh, or sentences so you can get them to write then uh, you know um, they can do uh, uh, word games so you can get them to write do puzzles um, or you know just crosswords or cryptograms i'll just show you uh, what the um, uh, cryptograms are okay i'll just present uh, cryptograms to you so you can get to see that okay this is a cryptogram uh, it's um, you know it's different uh, alphabets that are there with the uh, you know with uh, corresponding numbers and you know you want them to uh, if you want to do a creative activity about learning your memory verse or you want to tell them what uh, we learned today in this narrative or um, uh, you know what is the truth we learned about god you can have uh, you know uh, uh, like um, the numbers written down in the uh, the dashes down um, uh, so each number corresponds to one alphabet so they have to look for example uh, the first word is 15 6 and 4 so 15 is uh, uh, what is 15 15 is h uh, 6 is uh, o and uh, 4 is um, w Okay, so H uh, O W is how. Okay, so basically they're trying to find the alphabets and then they would uh, get to their uh, memory verse or get to the truth that uh, you want to teach them or, uh, you know, or even the uh, 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 a nature of God or the name of God that you're trying to teach them or some aspect of God. So it's a very creative way of uh, doing this uh, and it's called cryptogram. Um, now there is another uh, puzzle you can also show them is uh, something like this, you know, to get them to find their way, uh, you know, uh, some fun puzzle that is. This is also another crossword puzzle that they can do uh, for their memory verse. So it's basically uh, the memory verse is taken from the NIV version. So if they look at any other version, they're going to get confused with the right words. So you can uh, tell them tell them the memory verse is from Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. And uh, you have the fill in the blank there. And you give them the clues, um, uh, you know, as they look into the references, they, the reference that is there, they can find the clue. And then, you know, uh, I mean, the, they can find the fill in the blank, sorry. And then they have clue three, clue one, and clue two. And then they have to just uh, write that here in this, uh, the box, okay, that is uh, given to them. So these are simple um uh, puzzles that you can do, cryptograms that you can um, uh, do for children, uh, and it this can be part of their uh, workbook. Uh, if it's a printed workbook that you've already made uh, available to them, then this this will already be there in their workbooks. But if not, you'll have to you know uh, get a printed uh, worksheet for them and give them uh, each week and uh, kids will be excited to do these uh, things because uh, at this age group you know basically uh, they can do puzzles um, they can play math games uh, so they you can use all of this to just uh, encourage them and get them excited and they love activities and they love to uh, discover things and to do things okay so back to our um, other presentation. Give me a minute. Okay. So you can use these uh, different kind of word games uh, like Bible puzzles, crosswords, and uh, cryptograms to uh, basically help them, um, you know, uh, uh, 
discover what you're teaching them, discover some truth or uh, uh, learn their memory verse and it will some it will retain in their um, minds. OK, um, they're learning to write uh, paragraphs. And so you can get them to write down, like I said, what they learned, how they're going to apply what they have um, uh, learned. OK, they can also give you oral reports so you can ask them questions. Uh, like I said, you know, um, uh, regarding the truths that you taught or, uh, you know, the revela revelations that you have given to them, uh, taught them about, they can um, answer those kind of questions. OK. Um, they're learning to do different kind of uh, work chores, uh, both at home, uh, uh, even at school. So here in um, uh, in children's church, in the Sunday school, you can get them, give them small responsibilities to do. They love it. Uh, and um, they're very enthusiastic. They look forward to helping, running around, because they're very active uh, in this age group. And they're more than willing uh, to help. So you can get their help. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can also teach them uh, how to be responsible and you know also teach them how to uh, that they can be useful in helping others both at home and uh, in children's church okay um they can play complex games so you can organize um uh, games and activities that are a little more complex compared to the other age groups uh, but need to be careful that you take precautions that they don't um, fall or hurt themselves uh, because they can be very excited they can be a little rash at times uh, they can hurt themselves they can hurt others uh, so we need to um, you know uh, put um, limitations uh, put rules uh, even as we get them to play different games or activities and don't get them to play really, uh, you know, complex games in terms of, um, uh, you know, where they'll exhaust themselves because they, then they're not going to uh, listen to what you are uh, going to teach them. They'll be very tired because uh, this age group, they are uh, very energetic. They're very lively. They are very willing to step forward and do uh, all the activities, uh, unlike the older age group where they are little, you know, you have to push them. Uh, but at the same time, this age group, you know, they, they get tired also very fast. And so you want, want them to get so tired that they don't listen to you and they're exhausted that they don't listen to uh, the main Bible um, uh, uh, lesson that you have uh, to teach them. Okay. But good to start off with a game so that, you know, their minds are active um, and uh, they, uh, their bodies are energized and, um, uh, you know, they're attentive. Okay. Uh, so you can get them to play uh, a little more complex games. Uh, they're very good at, um, uh, you know, with glue and scissors and all of those things. So you can give them a lot of craft activity. Uh, they like to do a lot of craft activity at this age. So you can get them to, you know, decorate and, um, uh, you know, put all these uh, shimmers and, uh, you know, do all of those things, ribbons and everything. They just love it. They're very excited. Of course, it will take a lot of time. So maybe you'll have to, uh, you know, kind of... Um, uh, oversee and uh, uh, look beforehand how much they can do, how much time you have, because you don't want to, uh, you know, give them all the time just to do an activity. Uh, but you can tell them to take it home, do it, and maybe bring it back next week. Or you can just uh, retain it with you, and then maybe next week they can continue and finish that activity. But they just basically like to do all of these uh, uh, you know, decorative uh, and complex craft activities. Okay, uh, they memorize um, uh, scripture uh, very well. So uh, you know, you can get them to memorize portions of scripture, like Psalm one, Psalm twenty three, Psalm one twenty one, uh, the Lord's Prayer, uh, Ten Commandments, Beatitudes. Um, they also can memorize the books of the Bible. So you can get them to memorize the book of, books of the Bible, the Ten Commandments, uh, the names of the uh, the, the disciples. Uh, you know, uh, what is love? 
uh, first corinthians so all of these the fruits of the spirit um, uh, the gifts of the spirit so you can get them to memorize because it's a good age where uh, you know uh, they are able to quickly memorize things um, it's so good age to catch them to memorize because once it's in their uh, minds it will never leave them for the rest of their uh, lives i remember you know uh, when i was in sunday school we had this um, bible match and uh, we had uh, we were given a book where we had uh, Psalm 1, Psalm 23, Psalm 100, uh, Psalm 121, the books of the Bible, uh, what is love, um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the disciples, and all of these things. And, you know, we had to memorize uh, the Ten Commandments. Uh, 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 and the book had all of these things which we memorized and we had to say it word perfect. If we miss out one word, you know, we had to go back and come back. We were given three chances. And I'm thankful, you know, we had this Bible match between the gospel girls and the Bible boys. And, uh, you know, uh, if we memorize one portion of scripture, you know, we get points and it adds on to the uh, to our team. Uh, it's a very exciting uh, thing, but the whole... Uh, uh, you know, um, uh, goal was to get children to memorize scripture. And I, I just uh, remember even at my age now, I can, I can just rattle off all the books of the Bible. Uh, and it's just so helpful. So it's a good age to get children to memorize. You know, sometimes we think, no, children, uh, they're small. They cannot memorize all of these things. No, they, uh, it's a good age uh, for them to uh, get them to memorize um, the books of the Bible and uh, the rest of scripture. Okay, uh, they're learning to pray together and individually. So, and they're excited to pray. They're excited to um, uh, pray for each other. So it's a good um, age also uh, to get them to, you know, begin to pray, teach them how to pray. Uh, if they're shy and they think they cannot pray, then you can, you know, what I do is uh, uh, I get them up in front and say, why don't you, before we start class, why don't you pray? And uh, they're very shy and say, come, I'll help you to pray. So I just, you know, uh, let them start. And if they struggle, I just keep putting a, a phrase or a sentence in their ear and they listen to me and they're praying. So what we are basically teaching them is, you know, uh, it's okay. Uh, uh, even if you say that you don't know how to pray, you can still learn how to pray. You can pray. Um, so get them going on that. Otherwise, if they say we can't pray and we let them be, then, you know, uh, They'll continue on saying we can't pray and they will never learn to pray. So just get them up in front or wherever they're seated. You can sit along with them and they can pray loudly. Just keep putting, uh, you know, uh, phrases into their ears. Uh, even as I'm mentioning all of these things, uh, it might you might not be a Sunday school teacher or you might not be teaching a Sunday school class, but you know this will help you even uh, as you have your own children or niece, nephews, uh, you can just help them uh, in these things. You can understand the developmental needs and just help them. Okay, uh, they begin to understand historical overview of the Bible, so you can give them a little bit of history, uh, you know about. Um, um, uh, you know, the Israelites, where they were, they were in uh, Egypt for 430 years, how God brought them, uh, desert, why did it take 40 years, uh, you know, for them to be in the desert, um, uh, their journey uh, about Canaan, why did God ask them to destroy all of the people in Canaan and all of those things. So you can give them a lot of historical overview of the Bible and they, they will be able to understand also why the, uh, uh, you know, when Jesus came and he was the Messiah and why did the people not receive him or accept him as the Messiah. So all of these historical overviews of the Bible, you can give them because um, uh, they will be able to understand, but not in quite in depth. So, you know, based on how much they can uh, and a child's understanding, you can, um, you know, communicate to them uh, the historical overview of the Bible. Now, what is a spiritual message they need to hear? A uh, salvation message. It's a wonderful age for us to, uh, you know, talk about sin, about salvation, about Jesus uh, coming to earth, why he came, and all of those things. They are able to understand and they can accept Jesus as their personal savior because they'll be more than winning, uh, moldable at this age. They 
freely uh, receive, they freely accept, they, uh, uh, you know, just take what you are telling them uh, and, uh, you know, you can lead them to accept Jesus as their personal savior. Um, the, the other spiritual messages they need to hear is that uh, God uh, loves them and uh, everyone else they know and meet, God knows um, God knows all about them and he loves them just like uh, they are. God has a wonderful plan for their life. God will never leave them nor forsake them. Uh, they can trust uh, in God. God is all powerful. He's all knowing. He's always present. He's there with them every time. He never leaves them nor forsake them. Uh, they also need to know that, you know, God is almighty. He's all powerful. Uh, there's nothing that, uh, that he cannot do. And there's nothing they can do to make God love them less. Okay. Um, uh, or more. He just loves them uh, the same, uh, irrespective of whether they get good marks or not, whether they're good in school or not, whether they're naughty or, uh, you know, well-behaved, you know, God loves them. This is something that they really uh, need to know because, uh, you know, uh, as they grow into grade four and five, you know, parents bring in a little bit of discipline. And sometimes they think that uh, because their parents are disciplining them, they don't love them, they don't care for them. They uh, are very sensitive. So, you know, this whole thing about God's love, that uh, God loves them, that there's nothing that uh, they need to do for God to love them more or less. And then also the important theological truth that Jesus is the, um, uh, the way, the truth, and the life, okay, because uh, they're relating with their other friends, so they're learning about other religions, even in their um, school textbooks, uh, so we need to know that Jesus is the only way to for salvation, uh, uh, you know, for them to be saved of their sins, uh, he's the truth, so the truth is in, in the Bible, uh, and, uh, you know, without Jesus, we cannot have um, life, okay. And uh, they also need to know that they are saved by grace uh, because of what Jesus has done on the cross. Uh, and it is through faith, by putting faith in Jesus and not by anything that they can uh, need to do. It's because in school, you know, their, uh, their teachers, if uh, they're well-behaved children, their teachers give them uh, opportunities to, uh, to take part in competitions or to be a leader or uh, to do things for them. But if they're not well-behaved, if they're naughty or if, you know, if they get uh, 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 less grades or poor grades and they're not uh, too good in their studies, the, uh, the teacher really puts them down. And so, you know, um, they are thinking that, you know, we have to study well, we have to be well behaved, we have to do this, we have to do that, so that my teacher loves me, so that my teacher speaks nice of me, um, so that my parents are not strict with me, but, you know, uh, they need to know that with God, it's, uh, they're loved by him. Uh, of course, you know, he loves them, but not love, uh, uh, like, he does not like or uh, sad about the sins that uh, they do. That truth has to be established in their minds, but they are saved by grace and not by works. So there's nothing that they need to do to, uh, you know, uh, uh, to be saved, just, uh, you know, exercise their faith and also nothing that they need to do to receive uh, God's love because he loves them unconditionally. Okay. Then they uh, also can, uh, at this age, a good age for them to, um, uh, to tell them that, you know, they can share Jesus with their friends because at this age, you know, they're very friendly. They like chatting. They like talking. And uh, they say things as they just have received it. Okay, because they're not thinking abstract, they're thinking concrete. Now, what do I mean by thinking concrete is concrete is, uh, you know, just the way they see things in the physical. Okay, just the way they experience things. The, uh, if they taste something, you know, just as it is, they will just say it. If they see something, you know, they'll just say it as it is. So uh, whatever they just receive from their parents, whatever they receive from, um, from you as uh, teachers or mentors or pastors, they will just say it. So, you know, it's a good 
think for them to just uh, share the salvation message because uh, uh, they are not going to be very conscious of what my friend is going to think about me and things like that as they grow older in you know seventh eighth ninth tenth grade they're very conscious about what they they say because they know if they say something their friends will laugh at them and it's going to hurt their self value their self esteem uh, so very important that at this age you can uh, get them to you know be evangelist in their own way to share uh, the salvation experience uh, or share the good news about Jesus to others and they will uh, you know be very excited um, to share it and tell others especially their um, friends okay and also basically what they receive you know they will just um, say it without any um, without holding back or uh, you know without thinking twice so it's a good age for them to uh, share to pray for others to care for others uh, to uh, minister healing to others even to prophesy to others i know children in grade 4 and 5 in children's church uh, you know when they receive something in prayer um, they basically say it even if it's to uh, older people and it's just uh, wonderful they'll just say it exactly like they have uh, received it so this is um, the uh, developmental needs of children in um, age, ages 3 to 10, uh, that is uh, standard 3 to standard 5. Any questions? Are all of you with me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. No. Okay, so before we move on, um, uh, we'll just summarize this whole section that we've been looking, uh, uh, you know, uh, this age groups that we had looked at yes uh, yesterday and today, uh, you know, the younger elementary that is six to nine years old, uh, first to fourth standard, just to bring in uh, uh, a little more uh, details or, uh, you know, draw to a conclusion. Uh, mentally or uh, intellectually, uh, these children who are six to nine years old, uh, who are um, in grade one to four, they um, live in the present. Uh, they learn best to creative activities. So it's very important to have attention getters, object lessons, uh, short, quick games, uh, puzzles, uh, but everything that is very simple and quick. Um, so that's not taking eating into your uh, Bible uh, time. Um, uh, so we will look at what object lesson means, what uh, attention getters are when we are learning how to, uh, you know, write out a lesson plan. Uh, they love to learn, explore, investigate. So they're willing to do anything, uh, any activity, any object lesson, any game, uh, any puzzle that you're giving to them. They think concretely, like I said, you know, as they see things, they will just um, say, uh, you know, uh, as they receive in their senses, uh, what they see, what they hear, what they touch, what they, uh, uh, you know, how they taste, uh, exactly, they will just say it exactly, okay, not, they don't think abstract, abstractly, because abstract means, you know, philosophically, or um, uh, they're able to think in a much deeper way. These children think very concretely. Uh, they grow in their language skills, both um, speaking, spelling, um, also writing. Uh, at this age, they're able to uh, kind of make a difference between facts and fantasy. Uh, we said children in, uh, you know, who are three and four year old, uh, they they're living more in a fantasy world, okay? Imagine things, magical things. Uh, that is why we have all movies that are so magical for them. They love it. But these children, uh, you know, they're learning to uh, sort out the difference between fact and fantasy. So it's a good age to tell them, uh, you know, uh, the difference between both of them. Uh, physically, they're growing, uh, but they're growing slowly. They have a lot of energy. Um, and hence, because they're very energetic, they find it very difficult to sit in one place. So you can't have them sit for half an hour or 45 minutes and just listen to you. You have to get them to do various things, whether turn their Bibles, open their Bibles, read, answer, uh, do a small activity, whatever. So uh, that's, uh, 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 you know, something that you need to uh, keep in mind. And also, even as they are... Uh, energetic, uh, you know, full of energy, they get tired very easily. So you need to 
know which activity you need to choose or games that would help them and not tire them easily. Spiritually, they they enjoy learning at church. They're open to learning about God. Uh, they also find it difficult to express their feelings, so you need to get them to speak out um, or put words to what they are going through. Uh, they pray easily when they are encouraged to pray, uh, taught to pray, uh, or you give them some help to pray. Uh, and they also easily accept what the authority figure tells them. So whatever their parents tell them, whatever the teachers tell them, they just accept it. They will just do it likewise, uh, or they will just share it with others. So it's a good age to... Uh, you know, to mold them, to guide them and lead them in the ways of the Lord in the right way. Socially, they love to have friends, uh, best friends. They keep changing their friends, though. Um, they're very loyal to their teachers. They love their teachers. The teacher is very loving, caring. They love them, uh, you know, very loyal. Uh, they also, at this age, have developed a sense of right and wrong. So, it's good to teach them what are the right things, what are the wrong things, because uh, the world is telling them something uh, and uh, the parents and um, uh, the spiritual teachers are telling them something else. So it's good to teach them uh, what is right, what is wrong. They enjoy working in groups so you can have group games and group um, activities. Now to teach this uh, age group, the, the elementary kids that are um, uh, standard one to four or ages six to nine, uh, you know, uh, what are some things to do to, you know, effectively minister to them? You know, you need to treat each child as unique individuals. Each one will be different, okay? We'll, we'll be learning the learning style next week. Each child has different learning styles. So we need to be sensitive. We need to know what is their learning style and, you know, get them to, uh, you know, understand in their learning style, help them, not force them to incorporate other learning styles. Others, you're going to really demotivate the child and the child will not be willing to come to children's church, okay? Provide uh, activities for... Um, experimenting and exploring because they are very creative they uh, like to explore things like to learn new things um, um, you know make the uh, application very clear and each lesson uh, with uh, learning and application how they can apply because so they think well uh, they're willing to do things they're excited to do things so teach them how to apply so when you teach them how to apply even when they get to adult church when they're listening to the sermon they easily you know it's ingrained in them it's part of their system i have to go back this week and i need to apply this why? Because they have been trained uh, when they're in children's church, okay? Uh, plan activities for each lesson because they love activities and they're full of energy. They can't sit uh, quiet, you know, the, all the time. Um, they, uh, they also are good at reading, writing. I said that so you can involve those, uh, uh, you know, uh, skills as well. Uh, also avoid any detailed work that they have to do, uh, you know, just keep it very simple so that they don't tire easily. Um, uh, you know, explain to them what is the difference between fact and fantasy. Uh, also make prayer and worship a natural part of their time to uh, gather, get them to worship God, get them to pray. Um, and also when you minister to them, do things in a way that will earn a good respect and a, their admiration, okay? Uh, that they will learn to admire you and love you. So when they admire you and love you, they will just do whatever you are telling them, whatever you are teaching uh, them, okay? Uh, and when you are teaching them, speak to them literally, okay? Give them the truths because they're able to understand, they're able to think concretely. They take things just as you uh, tell them, don't confuse them, just tell them things plain, simple, but give them the truth. Um, they're beginning to find out who they are and what they like. Uh, so give them different choices in things that they would do. Some child may like games, some child may not like games, some child may like to uh, worship God, but not do the actions. Some may like to do the actions, so you know they are creative in choreography. 
some children may not want to sing because they don't have good voices. Some may like to play instruments. Uh, you know, some children are just standing there and they're just tapping the table, uh, making their own, you know, drum beats or um, uh, whatever. So let them explore their own creative uh, skills, give them opportunities um, uh, to do that. Um, you know, the, these kids love to help, so get them to help you, whether you're doing a game, uh, a, an object lesson, or arranging the tables or the chairs, whatever, getting uh, things for the class, you can just um, uh, get them to uh, help you, okay? And these kids are very, very active, so they said, make sure that, ensure that you have a lot of activities. Uh, they're very competitive in uh, nature. Uh, and they don't like losing games or they don't like losing, uh, you know, uh, uh, an activity when, you know, they don't get the first prize or uh, they lose in a game. It really saddens them. It really disappoints them. Uh, so even as you acknowledge um, uh, the person who came first, it's also good to acknowledge um, you know, um, all of them who participated and maybe, you know, if you're giving a, uh, uh, a candy bar or a you know a big chocolate to the f the person who won you can make sure that you give uh, at least a sweet uh, or a toffee to the rest of them because they get totally demotivated because they're very competitive in nature uh, so you know just have general games don't have competitions but even if you have bible quiz bible competitions uh, because you're getting them to learn scripture passages it's good to motivate and tell them it doesn't matter you know maybe you lost this time but next time you can really start uh, learn well you can learn the quiz memorize the bible portions and uh, do well next time so just motivate them and encourage them okay um uh, these children, um, you know, if they are worried or unhappy about something, they will just be focused on them. They con they only concentrate on that, um, you know. So uh, generally, don't they don't have the strength to overcome, uh, you know, what they're going through, their anxieties, their worries, or if their parent has just shouted at them while coming to children's church, shouted at them at home. They just carry that whole thing. They'll just be very quiet, very they'll be sulking. Uh, they won't be willing to do any activities. Uh, so, you know, um, just get, give them their space, but also get uh, work with them after class or, uh, you know, just motivate them and say, I know maybe you look upset or you're angry. We don't know what happened, but uh, why don't you just, you know, uh, take part in this activity and uh, see what you can learn. So just encourage them. Uh, it'll just... Uh, you know, motivate them and help them to know that they can, they need to overcome their worries and anxieties and then move on to other things as it comes uh, through the day, okay? Uh, they generally need help. Um, they generally need an adult to help sort, sort out their uh, arguments and disagreements. I told you they're very friendly. They have best friends, but they change their friends. If they get angry with them, they change their friends. They're learning also accept the differences of others. So at this age group, they get into a lot of arguments, disagreements. So as a teacher, you need to step in, help them uh, see things quickly and uh, just move on and uh, get them to be friends again. OK, uh, they might be a little bossy, uh, you know, uh, timid, brash, or sometimes they're very uncertain because of their emotions. Uh, they might tend to come across very rude to you. But, uh, you know, you can just handle them with love and teach them what is the right way of uh, behaving. Uh, what you can do is uh, when they behave like this, just listen to what they have to say, encourage them in a realistic way, give them little uh, individual time uh, to think maybe next week when they come back uh, you know they'll be better uh, you can pray for their behavior during the week because they need god's help and also time take time to build up a relationship with each child know you know their strengths their weaknesses where you need to work with it helps just helps you to mentor them guide them uh, teach them and also you know um, uh, pray for them so uh, the work of a children's church uh, minister or um, uh, a Sunday school minister is not just teaching the Bible lesson, but it's, uh, you know, holistic approach where you're going beyond to see what they're going through, their emotions, their behavior, 
getting them after class, just talking to them, hearing them out, helping them deal with their things and, um, you know, uh, uh, giving, uh, mentoring them in a holistic way. Okay. So that is like uh, the overall, um, uh, you know, needs or um, uh, uh, what do you say? The developmental needs or um, who a six to nine year old is or who a, a child in grade one to four is, what is their needs, how they behave, uh, what they look forward to and how you can really help them effectively. Okay, any questions? Any questions, any doubts? The time is up, so we will look at um, the next age group, the 11 to 12 years old, those are who are in six and seven standard uh, next week uh, in our class on Monday. So we'll stop here. Uh, anyone has any comments, any doubts, any questions? No? OK, if no, then we will uh, uh, stop end class here. Thank you all for uh, joining in today. And uh, uh, have a wonderful day and a week ahead, and I will see you for uh, uh, see you tomorrow for our next class. Okay, bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you.